In this video, we're going to talk about the times that heat pumps just don't make sense. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you will know that we are a big advocate for heat pumps and heat pump technology. And we talk about the various types of heat pumps on the market. But the fact remains that there are certain situations where it just does not make sense to get a heat pump. And we're going to talk about that in this video. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home. And if you find this content, helpful. It's a free way that you can show your support. So that being said, let's dive in and talk about the number one time that heat pumps just don't make sense. And that is an extreme cold conditions. I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not talking about geothermal heat pumps because the way that geothermal works, the COP or coefficient of performance, or for someone who's tuning in for the first time and doesn't know what any of that means and is not familiar with some of the terminology, basically, can a heat pump keep up in cold weather? That's what COP and those other efficiency ratings that I reference have have to do with. I'm not talking about a geothermal heat pump because those can keep up basically in any climate conditions provided that the ground temperature remains conducive for your geothermal loop to run at an operating temperature that your heat pump can keep up. We're talking specifically about air source heat pumps in this video. Now in extreme cold climates, and I'm talking about places like Alaska or maybe the Northern Territory in Canada or places where it gets very, very cold. And I'm going to define what that is in terms of temperature, but that would mean that your average highs, not your low temperatures, but your average highs do not get above five degrees Fahrenheit on a regular basis, then you might want to consider an, an option other than a heat pump. And the reason I choose five degrees Fahrenheit as a temperature is because that's the threshold to qualify for a uh, tax credit for and be qualified as a quote unquote cold climate heat pump because most cold climate heat pumps, in order to qualify for that designation, they actually have to maintain a minimum of 70% of their capacity at five degrees Fahrenheit because what happens with a standard heat pump is they start to derate significantly once the temperature outside gets below 30 or 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, most heat pumps can actually still do well in cold weather and be more efficient than, let's say, electric resistive heat. So if you're in a very cold climate and you're off grid and you only have access to, let's say, solar and or a generator and your own battery backup, then in your and you can't get propane in or out of your property regularly because the roads aren't paved or plowed and you're like really boondocking it. OK, then in that respect, a heat pump still might makes sense for you, but chances are you're still going to have some other source of primary or backup heat like a pellet stove or a wood stove just to keep up because the heat pump will be convenient in this respect only because you don't have access to other energy sources. But if you're living on the grid and you're living in a very cold climate that has very cold winters where you're below that threshold of five degrees Fahrenheit, what's going to happen is that your heat pump is just going to be running at a very low efficiency by comparison to what it would cost, let's say, for a natural gas furnace or boiler to operate. So in that respect, you're going to want to opt for traditional forced air furnace or boiler because a heat pump just isn't going to keep up or it's not going to be cost effective. And I'll, I'll spell it out like this. Uh, most heat pumps, let's say there it's negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. What you will see if the heat pump is still able to keep up is that the capacity D rate and the coefficient of performance drops as well. And it might even on a cold climate heat pump, an air source heat pump, it might be running at a 1.5 coefficient of performance, which means that it's only 50% more efficient than electric resistive heat. What this will translate to is that unless you have very expensive natural gas or very expensive heating costs, like you heat with propane, and maybe you're paying three or four or five dollars a gallon, which would be very expensive. We've only paid over three dollars a gallon here a few, you know, a handful of winters. But the bottom line is that that would be an instance where it might make sense to have a heat pump regardless, even though it's not going to keep up just because of exorbitant fuel costs, if you are going the route of heating with propane or oil or something else. But for most people in an extreme cold climate, if you have access to natural gas on the grid, a heat pump, it might be a good option for the shoulder season if you're going to go with a dual fuel option because remember a heat pump is also your air conditioner. So this way you'll have air conditioning in the summer and you'll have a heat pump to run on the shoulder seasons. And then in those coldest three months out of the year, you will have a furnace as your primary heat source. But if you're trying to go for a heat pump for your primary heat source in one of these climates where it's extremely 
really cold like this, it's really not going to work well. And I would advise you to go with something else like geothermal or a forced air furnace or any of the other technologies that we have talked about that work well in cold climates on this channel. Now, the number two reason or time that heat pumps just don't make sense is when you see a high electric cost versus a gas cost. So if you have a gas furnace and let's say you're paying $2 per therm and your kilowatt rate is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. In this instance, it is actually pretty cheap to run a heat pump because you have a very low electric rate. But what happens if your electric rate was to go up to like 50 cents per kilowatt hour in the winter? In this instance, it would not make sense to run a heat pump because the cost to run your heat pump is going to be substantially more than the cost to run a furnace or other heating source, assuming that fuel cost is cheaper by comparison. This is going to vary widely by region. The bottom line is you have to look at your cost per therm and compare that to your cost per kilowatt hour would be. And we talk about that in another video and go through that formula. It's a little complicated, but if you want to watch that, I'll make sure to link that video at the end because that's really the only way to determine if it's going to be more cost effective to run a heat pump in your market or more cost effective to run a furnace. Now, the number three reason or time that a heat pump doesn't make sense is that you're doing it for environmental reasons, but you don't have solar on your home. Now, if you have plans on adding solar panels in the future, maybe it still might make sense for you to get a heat pump. But the truth is, is that if you are getting a heat pump because you want to decarbonize and stop using fossil fuels, you want to remember that right now, more than half of our electricity on the grid does not come from clean sources. It does not come from nuclear. It does not come from solar or wind. It actually comes from burning fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas in order to get electricity to power your heat pump. So if you're doing this for environmental reasons to reduce your carbon footprint, and you're thinking that getting a heat pump is going to be the ticket that saves the planet, unless you are paying for clean energy, that is not going to be the case. It might reduce your pollution locally because you're not going to have a furnace that is dumping exhaust outside, but there is still a net carbon production being produced somewhere to provide the electricity for your system if you're not producing it yourself or designating on your bill that you want to buy only clean energy. Now, if you happen to live by a source of clean energy, like a wind farm, for example, in Limon, Colorado, there happens to be a massive wind farm out there that produces a ton of power for the Denver metro area, then you might be able to sleep at night knowing that you're heating your home with wind. But just keep in mind that that's something you really want to look into if that's your primary reason and motivation for going with it. And number four, we kind of already touched on, but that's basically if your electricity source is dirty. So that means if you live in an area where your primary sources of electricity are coming from coal-fired plants or natural gas generators, it might not make sense for your specific situation. Since I've already touched on it, I'm not going to go much further into it. And the fifth and last situation or condition when heat pumps just don't make sense is if you're putting in a basic single stage heat pump. And I'll explain why. If you live in a cold climate or a moderate climate, someplace like Utah or Colorado, and you're trying to put in a heat pump because you want to reduce your carbon footprint or just not have a furnace anymore, and that's part of your big motivation, but you're just putting in a basic single stage heat pump. The problem is, is that basic single stage heat pump, number one, is not going to be very efficient. Number two is it's likely not going to keep up very well, and it's not going to do a good job heating efficiently because it's not a cold climate heat pump. So it's actually designed for more moderate temperatures or even temperatures where you don't heat that much. So for example, a single stage heat pump might be okay from a heating perspective uh, in a market like Houston, Texas or Southern Florida or Phoenix, Arizona, because if you're just putting in the cheapest heat pump, you're not really worried about how well your heat pump heats when your lows in the winter are 40 or 50 degrees, because even a single stage heat pump at those temperatures is pretty efficient. The downside with those single stage heat pumps though, is that remember in the summer, your heat pump becomes your air conditioner. And so now if you have an inefficient heat pump, that means you have an inefficient air conditioner. So even though you don't worry about heating efficiency as much in a warmer climate like southern Florida or southern Texas, you will worry about its efficiency if you're using it to air condition your home in the summer because that's going to cause an increase in your bills, make it generally more expensive to run your system and make you feel like you maybe didn't get what you paid for. Now, this only applies if you are really trying to reduce your bills, but if you have really reasonable bills, and I'll define reasonable as let's say anywhere between $100 and $200 for utilities, and you don't pay a lot of money to heat and cool your home year round, then it might not matter that much and you might still opt for a basic single stage system. And it still might make sense to get a single stage heat pump system based on that condition. But the bottom line is that a, a local contractor in your area is going to be able to give you advice on what makes the most sense for your specific situation, the goals you're trying to achieve and what your primary motivation is for buying a heat pump in the first place. So we hope you found this content helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button for the algorithm. And again, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to be in the market for HVAC,
HVAC system replacement, or if you just recently moved and you need a permanent HVAC company to take care of your regular maintenance and service, click the link in the description below to be connected with a local contractor in your area. We've actually teamed up with a handpicked group of contractors nationwide that maintain the highest customer service ratings on Google, as well as technical excellence. So if you've watched this show and you thought, wow, I'd really like to work with these guys, but it's too bad that they only service a few select areas, I feel you. And that's why we've decided to partner with the best local contractors nationwide in your area, some of which have even been featured on our show. This way, you can find a contractor that's familiar with the latest technology, whether that's cold weather heat pumps or inverter driven heat pumps that work well on battery backup or solar or in-floor radiant heat or any other technology that's specific to your climate or your region. We're partnering with those contractors. So click the link in the description to request an appointment with us or with a vetted HVAC dope show contractor in your area. And right now there's a few videos popping up on the screen that YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next episode.